am Pinoy Rob. I am Pinoy Rob. For the headlines, weather forecast, shoreline influences weather in the Western Pacific. Local news, fire in Barangay Pata, 6 million pesos in damage, 25 families affected. 17-year-old who killed agricultural engineer in crash under DSWD custody. BSPGSP members and mentors involved in truck accident. The barangay captain in Hinoog City was found dead in a river in Misamis Oriental. National News DOJ gives Vice President Sara Duterte five days to respond to sub regarding plot to kill Marcos Jr. International News Australia to impose social media ban on children. Catherine and Alden express gratitude as Hello Love again surpasses 1 billion box office milestone. Gilas Filipinas has always had heart. Now it has the height and might to back it up. International feature. Prosecutor. French rape trial must lead to a shift in gender dynamics. National feature. Jingo Strada urges unity. Appeals to avoid another people power revolution. Trivia, lifespan of a butterfly, short but adaptable. If you find this segment informative, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe to stay updated with our latest news and share this broadcast to your friends and family. Your support helps us keep you informed. Help us get our first 10,000 subscribers. Your engagement matters. Liking, sharing, and subscribing to our content not only helps more people discover the important stories we bring you, but also supports our team's hard work. It boosts our visibility in the algorithm, making it easier for others to find ways to stay informed. Plus, it helps us generate more resources to continue delivering the news you rely on. Thank you for being part of our community. Good morning, Philippines. Magandang umaga, Luzon. Ug may adlaw, Visayas, ug Mindanao. Today is Wednesday, November 27, 2024. I am Mathalia Pisaniel. Local news. Fire in Barangay Patag, 6 million pesos in damage, 25 families affected. The damages caused by the fire that occurred in Zone 3 Barangay Patag of the city amounted to 6 million pesos. Five houses were completely burned while one was partially damaged affecting around 25 families. The fire is believed to have started in the home of Cecilia Boliozos. According to the City Fire District Operation Chief Fire Senior Inspector Kyle Brian Lozon, the possible cause of the fire was electrical, but investigations are ongoing to determine the exact reason. The fire alarm was raised to fourth alarm status, requiring additional forces to extinguish the blaze. Residents stated that the fire spread rapidly because most of the houses were made of wood and there was a lack of water in some areas. The Bureau of Fire Protection and Barangay Tanods led efforts to extinguish the fire and protect other houses from being affected. The affected families are temporarily staying at the evacuation center while waiting for assistance from the local government. 
Relief efforts have begun for the victims, including the provision of food, water, and temporary shelter. Meanwhile, other victims are awaiting additional support to help them move forward with their lives. The BFP also reminded the public to be cautious in using electricity and ensure their electrical lines are safe to prevent similar incidents. 17-year-old who killed agricultural engineer in crash under DSWD custody. The 17-year-old youth responsible for the death of a 67-year-old woman following a violent collision on the diversion road in Bara Opel, Misamis Oriental last week is temporarily under the custody of DSWD 10. This comes after information from the pr prosecution stating that the DSWD would initially hold the suspect, while no charges have been filed yet, unlike being detained by the police. The decision to place the suspect in DSWD's custody was made after it was deemed that the suspect, being a minor, should be held in a child welfare facility rather than a police detention cell. A Paul police station investigator police Staff Sergeant Darrell Karinilan previously stated that they plan to file three criminal charges against the suspect for the death of the victim, Emmeline Pagaling, and for injuring six others. The victims, riding in a Ford expedition, were hit by the suspect driving a Ford Everest due to the latter speeding last week. It was reported that the suspect was traveling at high speed and lost control at high speed and lost control of the vehicle, leading to the crash that caused the fatality and injuries. Authorities are continuing their investigation into the accident and are gathering additional evidence to support the charges. Meanwhile, the families of the victims are calling for justice and accountability for the loss and injuries they sustained. The incident has also prompted local officials to review traffic safety measures along the diversion road to prevent similar accidents in the future. The DSWD, for its part, has assured that they will closely monitor the case and ensure that due process is followed for the young suspect. BSP, GSP members and mentors involved in truck accident. The teachers and students involved in the truck accident in Marangay, Sibantang, Talisayan, Misamis Oriental are all safe. According to information received from Misamis Oriental Police Provincial Director Colonel Will Boy Salagoste, from the Talisayan Municipal Police Station, the victims were on their way to, to the Jamboree when the forward truck lost control, resulting in the accident. The victims, who were from the elementary, Junior and senior high schools in Barangay Santa Ines were members of the Girl and Boy Scouts who were on their way to an event where the accident occurred. The truck, which was carrying the group, was driven by Councilor Nestor Cabotaje. Upon losing control, the vehicle skidded up the road, eventually overturning. The victims, along with the truck driver, were quickly rushed to nearby hospitals for medical treatment due to the injuries they sustained from the crash. However, local authorities reported that none of the victims sustained life-threatening injuries, and the injuries were described as non-severe. Some of the individuals were treated for minor bruises and scrapes, while others were examined for possible sprains. The local government and emergency response teams were swiftly responded to the scene to assist those affected. In the aftermath of the accident, both the Talisayo Municipal Police and emergency medical personnel coordinated to ensure the victims were safely taken to the medical facilities. As of the latest reports, the victims are expected to recover soon, and the authorities have launched an investigation to determine the exact cause of truck's loss of control, including factors like road conditions and vehicles maintenance. The Brandai captain in Hinoa was found dead in a river in Misamis Oriental. A 62-year-old man identified as Raul Magalian Alerta was found dead after being rescued from a river in Barangay 23, Hinoa City, Misamis Oriental, last morning. Alerta, who was the Barangay captain of Barangay 24, 4 7 in Hingoog City 
who was also known to be an active member of the Knights of Columbus in the local parish. His body was discovered floating in the river by local residents, who immediately reported the incident to the authorities. Initial investigations by the Hinoog City Police revealed no visible signs of foul play. However, the cause of death remains unclear as authorities are still gathering information. It is suspected that Alerta may have drowned, although no conclusive evidence have been found yet. Witnesses reported that there were no unusual events reported in the area prior to the discovery of his body. The local government and authorities are conducting further investigations, including reviewing any security footage from nearby areas to determine if there was any external factor involved in his death. The family of the victim has been informed, and they are waiting the results of the autopsy to clarify the cause of death. Local residents and parishioners have expressed their shock and sadness. Remembering Alerta as a dedicated community leader. Weather forecast. Share line influences weather in the Western Pacific. There are no tropical threats in the Western Pacific at the moment, but I'll touch on the long-range outlook shortly. Today's main weather driver isn't the easterlies, though they are bringing some showers to parts of Mindanao, including Caraga. The primary focus is the shear line, a zone formed where cold air from the north meets warmer easterlies. This isn't a true cold front, as cold air weakens by the time it reaches the tropics. Instead, the clash between strong northerly winds and lighter, Warmer easterlies creates the shear line, affecting northern eastern Luzon and parts of Vietnam with increased cloudiness, afternoon thunderstorms, and significant rainfall, particularly in areas like Cagayan. North of the shear line, cold air effects are causing snowfall in Japan, with drier conditions in Okinawa, while northerly winds persist. A fresh cold surge is expected to by Tuesday and Wednesday, bringing more snowfall to northern Japan, delighting winter sports enthusiasts. Further south, surfers along Luzon's eastern coast, including the Batanes Islands, can enjoy excellent waves as easterlies remain dominant. Although the tropical season has ended, the waters of Mindanao's eastern seaboard remain warm offering favorable conditions for surfing. National News, DOJ gives Vice President Sal Duterte five days to respond to Sabuena regarding plot to kill Marcos Jr. The Department of Justice announced on Monday that it will issue a Sabuena to Vice President Sal Duterte in connection with an alleged plot to kill President Ferdinand Marcos Jr., identifying her as a self-confessed mastermind behind the assassination plan targeting the country's highest elected official. The National Bureau of Investigation has already started tracking the hitman Duterte reportedly hired to kill Marcos Jr., according to DOJ Undersecretary Jess Andres. Duterte will be given five days to explain herself to investigators. Andres further stated that the DOJ would conduct a thorough investigation and if Duterte is found involved in the plan, legal action may be taken against her. Andres added that the investigation would also explore possible links between, between the assassination plot and other political figures or groups. Authorities have been collecting intelligence and testimonies that might uncover the broader implications of the conspiracy. Officials also noted that 
any attempt on the president's life will be treated as a national security threat and handled with the utmost seriousness. In the meantime, both the DOJ and MBI have assured the public that the investigation will be fair, impartial, and transparent. Furthermore, the DOJ is working closely with law enforcement agencies to monitor any potential threats related to the plot. In response to public concern, spokespersons from the government have reiterated their commitment to upholding the rule of law and ensuring that those involved in the plot will be held accountable. National News. Australia to impose social media ban on children. Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese on Monday sought to address concerns over privacy regarding his government's proposed ban on social media for individuals under 16. He emphasized that the companies will be required to eliminate personal data used for age verification, ensuring that privacy is protected. Australia is planning to test a new age verification system which may involve biometric data or official government identification to enforce an age restriction for social media users. This initiative will introduce some of the most stringent controls in the world, affecting global platforms like Meta Platforms, Instagram and Facebook, ByteDance's TikTok, Elon Musk's X and Snapchat. If passed, these laws will impose the highest age limit for social media usage set by any country. The legislation will, no, will have no exemptions for parental consent or for existing accounts. Companies that fail to comply will face hefty fines, potentially up to $32 million. The goal of the legislation is to protect minors from harmful content on social media and it is part of Australia's broader efforts to address the growing concerns of digital safety and mental health risks associated with excessive social media usage. The country's government is advocating for a balance between ensuring online safety and respecting user privacy. With these regulations, Australia is aiming to, to set a global precedent in internet safety and social media governance. Entertainment. Catherine and Alden expresses gratitude as Hello Love again surpasses 1 billion pesos box office milestone. Catherine Bernardo and Alden Richards are overwhelmed with gratitude as their much anticipated reunion film, Hello Love Again, has achieved a groundbreaking milestone. The movie has officially become the first Filipino film surpassed the 1 billion pesos marked globally at the box office. As of November 23, the film has grossed an impressive 1.6 billion pesos, a remarkable achievement for the local film industry. In a heartfelt message shared through a video by ABCBN Films, the duo expressed their surprise and appreciation for the overwhelming success of the film, especially given the challenges faced by the entertainment industry during the pandemic. Catherine shared, we didn't expect that it would reach this milestone, but we're truly grateful to all the fans who supported us. All that echoed her sentiments, acknowledging the unwavering loyalty of their fans who made the success possible. Hello, Love Again is a romantic drama, marks the reunion of Catherine and Alden, who previously worked together on the successful series Billionaire's Girl. The film follows the story of two individuals rediscovering love after experiencing personal struggles. It was widely anticipated even before its release, and the success at the box office has solidified the movie's place in Philippine cinema history. The film's success has not only set records but also demonstrated the enduring popularity of Filipino love stories. Sports. Gilas Pilipinas has always had heart, 
Now it has the height and might to back it up. Gilas Filipinas ended the year with a strong finish, demonstrating consistent improvement throughout the season. Their solid performance in the latest window of the 2025 FIBA Asia Cup qualifiers was a clear reflection of this progress. The Nationals, fresh from their inspiring run in the 2024 Olympic qualifying tournament in Riga, that via last July, and a golden finish in the 2023 Asian Games, had fans and supporters buzzing. They delivered another impressive victory by dominating Hong Kong on Sunday, just three days after their historic win against world number 22 New Zealand on Thursday. A victory that sent a strong message to the global basketball community. Gila's back-to-back -back wins underscored their growth as a team, with their newfound depth, talent, and resilience. The victories over such high-caliber teams prove that the squad has their ability to compete with the best. The team's performance, particularly their defense and offensive execution, highlighted the development of key players and their increasing chemistry on the court. As the team continues to build momentum, Gilas Filipinas looks poised to take on tougher challenges ahead. International feature, persecutor, French rape trial must lead to a shift in gender dynamics. In a trial taking place in Avignon, France, the accused man is charged with orchestrating a horrific rhyme in which he allegedly recruited multiple strangers to rape his wife, who was drugged and incapacitated at the time. The prosecutor, Jean Francois Mayette, emphasize the trial's broader implications, urging society to confront and reassess deeply and wrench dynamics in the relationships between men and women. Mayette argued that the case is not just about the legal outcome, but about an urgent societal need to rethink, consent, respect, and mutual understanding. He highlighted the importance of addressing the imbalance of power and ensuring that the both partners in any relationship have their voices heard and respected. The prosecutor also pointed out that this case has brought to the forefront uncomfortable but necessary conversations about gender roles, the treatment of women, and the fundamental concept of consent. The trial is seen by many as a pivotal moment for France with the potential to influence future legal frameworks and cultural attitudes regarding gender equality and sexual violence. <music> National Feature Jingo Estrada urges unity appeals to avoid another people power revolution. Senate President Pro Tempore Jingo Estrada on Monday called on the camps of President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. and Vice President Sara Duterte to de-escalate the political tensions and work toward reconciliation for the sake of the nation's stability. Estrada emphasized that the ongoing fighting serves no one's interest, particularly the Filipino people who are bearing the brunt, who are bearing the brunt of the conflict. In a statement to Senate reporters, Estrada likened the situation to a mayor and vice mayor at odds, noting that when political figures fight, it is the citizens who suffer. He expressed his concern, saying, I will just pray for it. I am hoping that they can reconcile soon, as the people are increasingly affected and divisiveness is spreading. Estrada acknowledged the tense atmosphere and expressed hope that the situation would improve. He suggested that one potential avenue for easing tensions might involve Senator Amy Marcus, who is both a close friend of Vice President Duterte and the sister of the President. Estrada believes that Senator Marcus could play a role in facilitating dialogue and fostering reconciliation. Regarding the possibility of another people power revolution, Estrada warned that it would only 
as China warned that it would only exacerbate the visions within the country and deepen the existing rift. Trivia Lifespan of a butterfly, short but adaptable. Some species of butterflies, particularly those living in temperate regions, have evolved to cope with seasonal changes by entering a state of dormancy or hibernation. During this period, their metabolic rates slow down significantly, allowing them to conserve energy and survive the harsh winter months when food sources like nectar are scarce. For example, the morning globe butterfly can live through the winter in its other form, while the painted lady and others may hibernate in the pupa stage. In tropical regions, butterflies generally have shorter lifespans as the conditions remain more consistent year-round. These butterflies often live for just a few weeks to a month, spending the majority of their time feeding mating and laying eggs. Their life cycle is quick, enabling them to take full advantage of the abundant resources available in their environments. The lifespan of a butterfly can also be influenced by various external factors such as predators, climate, and food availability. Butterflies play crucial roles in ecosystems as pollinators and their life cycle stages contribute to maintaining biodiversity. Despite their relatively short lifespan, their ability to adapt to different climates and conditions showcases their resilience in nature. And that was the information we got from here and abroad. Keep listening and watching. Please subscribe, follow, like, and share to my Rob on YouTube channel. And like our page and Facebook channel. And have a wonderful day. If you find this segment informative, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe to stay updated with our latest news and share this broadcast to your friends and family. Your support helps us keep you informed. Help us get our first 10,000 subscribers. Your engagement matters. Liking, sharing, and subscribing to our content not only helps more people discover the important stories we bring you, but also supports our team's hard work. It boosts our visibility in the algorithm, making it easier for others to find ways to stay informed. Plus, it helps us generate more resources to continue delivering the news you rely on. Thank you for being part of our community.